Yeah, exactly. You know, you're probably asking yourself this question for a reason. So you're you're feeling pain of something, either uh, it's too much editing uh, or you don't enjoy editing or you want to shoot more jobs and you just can't keep up with editing. So, um, you know, I, I think the answer might be in the question there, but really ask yourself, you know, why is this coming up right now? Um, and, and what am I trying to accomplish with uh, finding a potential partnership for an editor or just keeping this strictly to myself um, to, to, to have the creative control of, of all my editing? Welcome to the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business with your hosts, Todd Kivimaki and Craig Magro. Hi, and welcome to the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business. Spiro is a software platform designed to manage and help you scale and grow your real estate media business. I'm Craig Magrum. I'm the business development and client care specialist for Spiro and host of the podcast. And along with me as every week, our phone, our founder, our owner, uh, father, <laughs> dad, Todd Kimimaki. <laughs> thank you, Craig. Hey, it's great to be on with you today. Uh, I wanted to uh, thank our new subscribers. So starting off here, Jared, Jared Drew, thank you for subscribing. Uh, Thomas V-Man, thank you for subscribing. And Steve K, thank you, you three, for subscribing. That helps us. If you have not subscribed, it would do us a favor. And also, you'll be notified of when our new podcast drop, uh, just hit that subscribe button or the like or the heart, whatever it is on your platform, that would help us out and you will be notified when a new episode releases. Right, right. So uh, other ways that you can participate in this podcast, we would love to hear ideas from you on topics that you would like to watch or, or hear us cover uh, related, to, related to the business side of real estate media. Um, tons of great resources out there on, on the creative aspects of what it is that we do, you know, what lenses to use, what camera bodies, how to compose shots, how to, how to shoot video tours, things like that. Uh, but we really want to dive into the business side and, and help people build a solid business um, to provide for you and your, your family, your loved ones, and do something that you you enjoy. Uh, so if you have a question or you know something you would love to see us cover, uh, drop us an email. You can email us at hello at spiro.media. And uh, yeah, we would we'd love to touch base with you and, and uh, and hear your ideas. So leave us leave leave us a, an email, or or you can leave us a comment on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, we would love to interact with you there also. Um, make sure that uh, you subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes that that come down. Typically, it's Monday mornings at 5 a.m. is when we release these, uh, but you can download them and watch them anytime, obviously. Um, and, and like and share if if you find benefit and you have some colleagues in other markets that uh, you guys you know maybe have a, a like. A a mastermind group or something, um, and you see some or hear some great ideas here, um, we'd love for you to share it as well. So, all right, um, that all being uh, said, let's dive into things, Todd. And um, one of the questions that uh, I've seen brought up in, in some of the Facebook groups that, that I, I peruse for real estate media, uh, LinkedIn groups, there's some great groups on LinkedIn as well. Um, and, and this is one of those questions you're going to have, have to wrestle with sooner or later. Um, it's, it's the question of when and, and if you should bring on an editor. All right. Um, somebody to help you edit your real estate photos, your videos, um, you know, one of the questions you have to ask yourself, are you more the creative type that you love editing and you don't want to let go of that? You have a very particular signature style um, and that's part of your business model. Uh, or is it something where you're looking to scale your business and, and shoot more and you're just realizing, look, I, I can't shoot and sell and do customer service, you know, and edit um, and, and be able to grow it all. So if you're looking more to scale, um, you know, that's one of those questions when, okay, when do I bring on, uh, an editor? So what, when did you need to think about considering hiring someone to help you edit? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you're probably asking yourself this question for a reason. So you're, you're feeling pain of something, either, uh, it's too much editing uh, or you don't enjoy editing or you want to shoot more jobs 
and you just can't keep up with editing. So, um, you know, I, I think the answer might be in the question there, but really ask yourself, you know, why is this coming up right now? Um, and, and what am I trying to accomplish with, uh, finding a potential partnership for an editor or just keeping this strictly to myself, um, to, to, to have the creative control of, of all my editing. Right. Right. One of the other things you have to think about is, is the cost, you know, what's it going to cost me to bring on an editor, uh, or, or flipping on, on it, on its head, what's it going to cost me in in terms of the number of jobs if I don't bring on an editor. So really you have to look at, you know, multiple facets of, of cost involved in this question. Mm -hmm. you, you do, and you have to account for it. This is no different. So this becomes just a, a, another line item in your P and L and your budget. Uh, you know, we, we take it, we know our average number of images per job and we know how much we pay per image on average between all the teams that we have. And then uh, we, we know what that costs per job and we add it on uh, so that we can account for that editing uh, cost inside the budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let, let's go back to that question of, of the why of, of bringing on an editor. And um, I, I'll share just a personal story that, that was kind of my thought process on, on the why. For, for me, um, I wanted to shoot a higher number of, of jobs. Um, I didn't. I didn't feel like I could charge a, a high enough price in my market, um, and at my skill level at the time to to shoot a lower volume and you know like more luxury type shots. You know the super artistic, uh, very high end photography, architectural photography. Um, I I needed a higher number of jobs. I, I was concentrating more on residential. Um, you know I and I could do basic editing. Um, but I, I wouldn't consider myself a, a professional editor either. Um, you know, good enough that I, I could do residential. Uh, but I, I realized I would rather pay somebody else that can do quality work and, and, and do the work that's really time consuming so that I could concentrate on building my business and, and getting more, you know, higher number of jobs. Um, you know, the, the I just knew the quality was going to be better from somebody else, and and to pay them would make things easier. Um, yeah. So that's that's that that was kind of how I approached the question of why. That was a, that was the same reason the same reason for us too, Craig. Uh, we uh, this was oh goodness, it's been close to ten or eleven years that we've outsourced our editing. And it, we just simply couldn't keep up because we would come back home. I would come back home. Ryan would come back home. The, the team would come back home and they would have to edit their photos. I, I almost just laugh about it now thinking about getting home, you know, from a, a city that's an hour and a half away after shooting the entire day. And you go straight to your computer to import so then you can come back and merge and, um, and, and then you have to edit. And that's just the photos and then you do the video and then you need the import and all those things. So, uh, and you know, even I would even challenge you that if, if you're out there saying, hey, I just want to maintain my creative control and I have to have my stamp on this. I would really challenge you to find a really high end editor out there. I think sometimes when you think of outsourcing or a virtual editor, I mean, let's be let's be honest, there there's. There's been some some companies that have given given virtual editors or virtual assistants a bad rap, uh, and some of it is on on the business owner as well with communication. Remember, if you're outsourcing this to a team, probably in the Philippines or India, that's a different culture. Uh, you know, we have we have our own team in the Philippines. Uh, they um, they've been with us now for probably about five years, and we have a team in Kosovo as well. Uh, and, and then we, we outsource to another team in India that they're their own business. Uh, and, and that's just what worked for us doing a higher volume uh, of jobs. But if, if you're that individual niche photographer and you do a really high end product, uh, I would say just team up with a high end editor because one, if you can get them trained and keep quality high, there's got to be checks and balances. They're going to be more cost effective than what you're going to be. So if you can do it an hour and it takes them an hour, 
their one hour, you know, what's one hour of your time worth? Do you just recharge? Do you go build your business? Do you take an appointment uh, to potentially get more business? So I would really challenge anyone out there. Now we've outsourced now for quite some time and I could never imagine going back. But I think regardless if you wanna do volume or if you really wanna be extremely high end, you just have to build a relationship with the right realtor, <laughs> the right editor, excuse me. Right, right. So. <laughs> let, let me ask kind of a, a dumb question and uh, th this is it comes out of just just not knowing this for sure um when you approach an editor are are you conforming your business to their editing style or are you giving them the direction on the editing that you want to see for your work Great question. So we we always give the direction that we want. So we have a defined look. We have a, a a defined method. Now we give them some creative control. We always are asking, how could we make this better? You know, with our windows, with uh, you know, with color cast. Uh, how can we make this better? So I don't think you want to uh, kind of pigeonhole them until you just do step A through Z. I think you teach them. Uh, you have to you have to check on their work. You really have to QC their work, uh, and then also empower them. What, how do you think it could, we could have a better image? This is some of the feedback we've received from our realtors, and they want the windows to have better views, or they want the floors. They're really concerned about the wood tones uh, to be you know to be accurate wood tones. How can we get those more accurate? Uh, so I think it's always good to ask them because again, you have to remember if somebody is over there editing photos eight hours a day. Like they're a creative person that likes to be behind the computer. They're probably an introvert and um, they really like digital media. So uh, don't be afraid to use them, but I would, I mean, make sure that they're delivering what your brand is and what your quality is. Sure, okay. So you can provide, you know, the direction that, that you're wanting for the editing, but you're also leaning on the editor a little bit to bring their creativity and, and approach. It's really kind of a, a teamwork type approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, let's dive into the question of really the mechanics of how the relationship with the editor works, meaning, um, you know, what are, what are the processes? What What's the mechanics of, of transferring files, you know, to them? getting them back, getting them, you know, integrated into your system. What, what's that look like? Yeah. So first off, if you don't know of an editor, you need to go find an editor. There's places out there you can find them. So everything from, you could start on Upworks, Fiverr, you could post, uh, you know, like, uh, like the Philippines, for example, they have a jobs website. What were you going to say, Greg? Uh, yeah, well, we met somebody at PMRE that is kind of a, a clearing house of, of editors. Yeah, call call Moses and Dan and um, they at Pixel Mob. So they will definitely uh, they are a marketplace of editors. Uh, Pixel is P I X L M O B. Don't put the E in there; you won't find it. P I X L M O B, and search them, and you can go on there, and they have a marketplace of editors. They did not pay us to, to mention their name. No, they didn't. They did not pay us. They're they're fabulous <laughs> individuals. Uh, had really good conversations with them uh, at PMRE this last year. Uh, they got it. They have a nice platform. It's a cool platform. So that is a platform. I'm sure there's other others out there that have editors on them. Uh, we historically have always uh, we started on uh, Upworks, and uh, and then uh, we went to um, meeting them through uh, there's. I can't think of what the website is right now in the Philippines. It's like jobs.ph or something like that. If you search for it, you can find, I mean, one of the, one of the big ways that the Philippines and some of these other countries make, uh, they train people to be virtual assistants and they're such hardworking and just happy individuals. We've gotten to know our team and they've been with us. Like I said, now some of them for five years and, um, yeah, it's really just great to get to know them and get to know, uh, see them grow and their families and things like that. Uh, but that, that is a practical standpoint uh, if you've got a if you've got a resource out there uh, leave us a comment or send us an email we'll share it with others um, but maybe you've you've got a great way to find some people I, I know the the comment is there's a there's a Facebook page out there that is just for Photoshop or for real estate editing and it's like six million posts a day of, of editors and uh, so if you if you can wade through that the big thing for me that I would encourage you to make sure you feel comfortable with is that you can communicate with your editor. So if they do not speak English, 
are you able, are they able to type English? Uh, do you, is it a non-negotiable? Do you have to be able to speak? Like we have to, be, that's just a non-negotiable for us. We have to be able to speak to our, our editors and our QC people. Uh, so um, you just have to set those things with what you're comfortable about. Uh, and, and you should go through your inter interview process, much like if you were to hire someone here, you know, in, in, in your town. Yeah. What, so, so what are, what is some of the infrastructure that you need to, to transfer files, get files back? Yeah. So, so you should be in a system. Uh, so our system, for example, so it's integrated with Dropbox. We use Dropbox and it auto after every job is complete. So you shoot the job, your team member shoots the job, they complete it in their, in their app and it creates Dropbox folders for each job. Then they come home and they, take their media from that shoot and they put it into those folders. At that point, it goes to the editors assigned to an editor. Uh, you know, we assign based on uh, not only just how many jobs can they do a day, but we also assign based on uh, the quality of editor they are. So our best editors get our VIP jobs and get our higher listing price jobs. And uh, then we filter them that way. So you got to assign it. You got to let an editor know that they have a job. And then from there, they need to go and edit. They need to understand what your, your, you know, you should have a one sheet or you should have some sort of training when you brought them in so that they understand what they deliver. Uh, you know, instructions are really great. Do they key out every window? Do they, do they only key in the main rooms? Do they not key any windows? Things like that. And um, from that, then they, the easiest way is that they put those edited photos or video, whatever it is, and they put it back into that folder structure. And then your system should grab those. It comes back into the display pages. Then I would highly recommend you go through a QC process, a quality control process. Uh, you, sh you should be looking or somebody on your team should be looking at these at these images. Um, and uh, we QC them in a little bit different ways. You know, of course, our VIPs, we're looking at every single one and we're adjusting and, and we'll work back and forth with the editor. Uh, but after you QC, get them out to your clients. And, it, you know, countries that are half a world away from us are great because their morning is our evening. So we upload in our evening they get it in their morning, they work their day, then by the time we wake up, the photos are done. So it, it's it's really a perfect time zone thing. Um, but that, that's a practical method of how we're doing it and how the system integrates perfect, with it. Perfect, perfect, yeah. So one, one of the other things you have to keep in mind when considering an editor is um, it, the different types of editing. Todd, you, you mentioned different types like, you know, keying out windows and, um, you know, more luxury type editing, high-end editing, you know, the Flambian, uh, HDR, you know, so those all have, um, I'm, I'm assuming, different, different price points. Um, so you, you kind of have to consider your budget. What's the range, um, the, the range of costs for those different types of editing? You, you know, how does somebody budget for bringing on an editor? Yeah, great question. As just a ballpark range, you're going to find anything from like 30 cents on the low end per image to five bucks, quite honestly. And that that's a range from a single exposure through HDR, through layer blending, through flambient. Um, and um, so that, that it's going to range based on, the, of course, the quality and how much detail, you know, are they spending two hours on each image? If they are, that's going to be a pretty magazine style architectural image. And, um, and you're going to pay for it. Um, but you should be charging for it accordingly. Right, right. So you mentioned a couple of different types of editing, you know, Flambian, HDR, um, things like that. Can you give it just a, like a basic explanation of what those different styles are? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So your your most basic is just a single exposure. So you go in and you take one shot. You're probably shooting this. So there's different file formats. You're probably shooting this in a raw format because you have more flexibility to edit and to maneuver uh, the tones. So your dynamic your dynamic range. Um, that is just one photo. Somebody brings it into Lightroom or another processing software and they adjust the tones and um, there's only so much you can do with one image because again the dynamic range you can only capture so much in one image uh, your next method is HDR 
and that is taking multiple images. So probably three or five images in each location. And you're taking some bright, some dark, and some in the middle. And then you're going to deliver those to your editor and your editor is going to blend them together in some fashion. Either they're going to use a program that blends them and then they're going to edit a flat file or they're going to layer blend those and um, draw and paint in and out the tones that they would like. Uh, Flambia is somewhat of the same. You're, you're delivering multiple images from one location, except you're using a flash now to, ex uh, to um, expose certain parts of the room uh, for certain um, lighting strategies or, or lighting conditions, excuse me. Um, you know, one thing that HDR for a long time got a, got a bad rap and um, because there was some bad HDR editing, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, I, I'm a big proponent of, of find a good HDR editor and um, I, the, you can overcome the problem. So your problems with HDR is just your color cast and your tones. They get crazy or they can get crazy because you're, you're, if you take five images, you're putting them all on top of each other and blending them. And then you've got this image that has tones that are not lifelike. Uh, now there's new techniques and new ways that you can get around that. And they, they can look really good. So again, I, I'll just to be completely transparent. Our, our business model is not the, the best of the best at wow. We want to have a great image that is uh, that has great colors and pops for the agent, um, but we're we're not an architectural company. Um, we want to do more jobs over, um, you know, while quality is important, but we 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 want to get more jobs in than than have extreme quality on each job. So, again, for what it's worth, your business model might be different. Right, right. So it's it's a different approach, you know, depending on what your market is and and what it is that you're you're trying mm -hmm. to accomplish. Um, so let me let me ask one other question. I don't think this needs to be a, a super long uh, episode of, of of the podcast. Uh, but one of the things that you mentioned that you need to consider when hiring an editor is is the communication issue, the, you know, the the language mm -hmm. issue, and um, being able to to communicate clearly the channels of communication. But um, one of the other things that that I'm wondering about is what what do you need to be cautious of in uh, in choosing an editor, um, because let's face it, a, a lot of the editors that we may be dealing with are overseas. We don't necessarily have a relationship with these people or, or any sort of uh, warm referral. Though um, you can ask for referrals on Facebook groups, and and others will share with you the the relationships that they have. And um, but what what are some of the the cautions that you should face? You, you should be considering as you consider hiring an editor to work with you in your business. Yeah. Um, so they're probably going to have some access to your systems and, um, you know, you need to make sure that you vet these people. They should, like I said, they should go through an interview process. And um, another thing is, is if, if you hire a team, do you know your individual editor? That's one thing that we always, um, you know, we had used some teams in the past where it just went to the team and, and that was problematic for us because we wanted to know the individual editors and we wanted to know which editor did each job because then we could pinpoint problems more quickly back to an individual editor than just the team. Right, right. Another thing, just as simple as it sounds, is, is are you able to pay them? Uh, you, it's, you know, PayPal and, and some of these other services reach a lot of the countries, but depending what country they're in, some countries are difficult to pay. Uh, so I would just, you know, how are you going to pay them? Make sure they have that arrangement. How are they keeping track? Are you, are you tracking, you know, do you pay them hourly? Do you pay them per image? Do they track it? Do you track it? Uh, if you disapprove an image, do you not pay for that image? Do they get a chance to fix it so that they still get paid for it? So just all those small little things, there's a lot of little things in there that it's good to talk about, or at least when you hit that bump in the road, have the conversation with them. And again, why you just need to be able to communicate with them because you're trying, you're entering into a, a, a relationship where, uh, you know, they're working for you and, and you're counting on this individual. Right, right. It yeah, I you know I didn't even think about the issue of payment. It's a, a great point. Mm -hmm. So it, as we wrap things up here, to to really kind of summarize um, what what you need to consider when hiring an editor, share your thoughts on that. 
Yeah. So, so one, why are you asking yourself this question? What is this going to allow you or your business to do? And um, really nail that down because that will tell you the type of editor you need to look for. If you're looking to give your images a better quality, then you need a higher end editor. Uh, and that's your goal. You want to grow in your image quality. Uh, or if you're looking to be able to shoot more or build your business, then you need to make sure that your quality standards are, standards are maintained, but you find a cost effect. If you can't pay someone five bucks an image, if your pricing structure doesn't account for it. So, uh, and just like with hiring anyone, uh, you can find them on many job sites out there. Um, uh, Fiverr, Upworks, uh, that Pixel Mob, Pixel Without an E, um, and I'm sure there's many other. Uh, talk to them. These are real human beings out there, and and you, you're going to need to develop a relationship with them so that uh, not only you but they can succeed. Right, right. And again, if if you have a great uh, editor or somebody, you know, a resource to find great re, uh, great editors or editing teams, uh, leave a comment in in the YouTube channel here on on this episode, uh, or feel free to email us if you if you have questions, you know, further questions about bringing on an editor. Uh, feel free to drop us an email. Hello at Spiro.media. This is an exciting thing. You are. This is a new individual or a team of individuals that you're bringing on. So while growth isn't easy, this is exciting that you're considering this. And, uh, you know, just take it at that. And this is a good thing for your business. For sure. Hey, we want to invite you to subscribe to the Spiro podcast if you haven't already. Um, that way you get a notification when new episodes drop. And uh, if if you found benefit to this this particular episode or, or any that you've watched, uh, you know, a like is always appreciated. It helps us get this in front of more people. And, um, and again, if, if you found value in this and you think it might help somebody else, let's let's share this with a colleague. Um, you know, uh, somebody you know in a different market, maybe a connection you've made through the PMRE conference or Eli Jones's conference. You know, we all, we, we enjoy networking and helping each other. So uh, feel free to, to please consider sharing the, this podcast as well. Um, again, if you have questions or if you have a topic that you'd love to see Todd and I or our guests come on and, and help cover on the business uh, questions of our, our, our businesses, um, email us hello at Spiro.media. Um, if you're you're watching on YouTube currently and you have drive time, maybe you're in between shoots, uh, you can subscribe to the audio podcast. Uh, you can get it on any of the major audio podcast outlets, you know, Apple, uh, Amazon, Spotify, iHeart, all those. You can also go to uh, spiromedia.podbean.com or conversely, if you usually listen to it, but you've got some screen time, uh, you know, back home in, in your home office or, or wherever, uh, you can catch it on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com forward slash uh, at Spiro podcast and you can find us there on YouTube as well. All right. Well, we just want to thank you for taking some time to, to listen, to watch, uh, to learn. Um, I, we know things are a little slowing down a little bit, so maybe you have a little bit more time and, and we appreciate that you chose to, to spend it with Todd and I. Um, and, you know, until the next episode, we just want to encourage you, just be thankful for the blessings that you've been given and, and uh, take a breath. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us for the Spiro Podcast, Managing Your Real Estate Photography and Videography Business. This is a production of Spiro and WOW Video Tours. You can find out more about Spiro's real estate media business management software at our website, spiro.media.